Asherala, all praises and glory goes to our mighty power, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rekak, Wadash, double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone and citations unto the elect men feeding the sheep of Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, and sincerity and the truth with this great gospel, man, with this great gospel coming out the Bible, coming out the Bible, and then in the Bible, man, it gives you a description of the Heavenly Father and His Son, the heavenly father and his son matter of fact um let's go to that right quick let's go to that right quick because that's important that's important in the times we're in because um it's a strong delusion that the lord looks like this character that you see here right here man this car's eye face devil it's the book of revelation um we're gonna start at one and one it says the revelation of Mashiach, of yahweh Mashiach, which our power gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and, mag and, and signified it, and, the, and he sent and signified it by his angels unto the servant of John, his angel unto the servant of John. It says, who bear record of the word of the Most High and the testimony of Yahweh Shai Mashiach, and all the things that he saw, and all the things that he saw, and one of the things that he saw was what the Lord looked like. The image of the Lord, it says, Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy. And um, it's a blessing to be able to read this, because um, to be able to know how to read, and to give have enough sense, and the mindset to be able to break down words, and understand writings through the power of the Lord, because in the churches, they're not going to go through these scriptures with you, man. They're not going to go through these different scriptures with you. Esau keeps it down very, very simple to the point where it's only about paying tithes. It's only about making money. It's all like that prosperity doctrine. <laughs> That's that doctrine. And now what else? A lot of fear mongering, <laughs> right? A lot of fear mongering in the churches, a lot of music, <laughs> A lot of music, a lot of false hope, man. Because who, who they who they who they tell you coming to save you? This dude right here, this man ain't never saved nobody. Who did he save the Native Americans when he first came to the shores of America? No. Did he save um the Hispanics? The when he came? No. He, he what did he do? He enslaved them. He enslaved them. He took over their lands. And what they came with that Jesus Christ. They came with that Jesus Christ. And um, but what does the Bible tell you our Lord and Savior look like? All right, let's go to we're gonna jump down to verse. <laughs> Here we go. Verse 14. Matter of fact, let's take it to 13. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to his foot and the girt about the paps with a golden girdle his head and his hairs right it says his head and his hairs look at this guy look like he want a hug his heads and his hairs were white like wool um nah this guy this guy don't look like he matched the description yeah you know how police are always looking for a person if police read this description they would walk right past Caesar Borgia. If they read the description out of Revelation 1 and 14, they would not pull over Caesar Borgia. I'm going to read it again. It says, His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his feet, what, what color was his feet? And your feet's the same color as your body, right? As your body. And it says, And his feet, like unto fine brass, as if they burn in a furnace. So dark skin, dark skin man with with woolly hair. With woolly white hair. Right? With red eyes. And it says in his voice, I'm gonna read it again, in his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burn in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. Right? So what what what, what is it what, what what happened? What happened when this man took over the society? When this man took over the kingdom, when this man took over the society, he set himself up as God. That's what he did. He changed the images and um, the deception is at an all-time freaking high because we already know this man, when he comes, he's not coming to help. 
he's not coming to assist. <laughs> he's not coming to assist. Um, if you can look at every country this man went into, what happened to that country? Um, the people end up going to war against each other, right? He set up different warlords, different dictators, <laughs> um, different presidents under his democracy, under his way of thinking. And what happened? These people, their whole way of system collapsed. Now they got a they got an, a banking a bank <laughs> in their country, um, ran by the Karzai's. That's how this dude gets down. He sets he destroys their system so he could set up his system, so he could be God. And um, like we said, when he came to the natives, when he came to the shores of America, he came with that that bullshit ass Christianity. And we're gonna read about some accounts. It says the first encounter. Matter of fact, the first encounter. Let me read this right quick. This is the book of John 10, verse 10. It says, The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. That is his method of operation and it never changed. Because it's it always worked for him. He's here to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And it reads, First encounters Native Americans and Christians. <laughs> and Christians. It says diverse Native American religion and cultures existed before and after arrival of European colonist, colonist, colonist. In the 16th, 17th century, Spanish conquistadors and French fur traders were generally more violent to Native Americans than were the Spanish and French missionaries, although few Native Americans trusted any European group. Yeah, they said one group was more violent than the other. He saw us, that's the blame game. But guess what? You're all guilty. You're all guilty. It says diverse Native American religion and cultures existed before and after arrival of European colonialists. In the 16th and 17th century, Spanish conquistadors and French fur traders were generally more violent to Native Americans than were the Spanish and French missionaries. Although few Native Americans trusted any European group, the majority of the early colonists did not recognize the deep culture and traditions of the Native people. Why? Because they didn't come here to learn the ways of the Native people. They came here. I'm going to read it again. John 10 and 10. The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's why they came to the shores of America. They could give two fucks about sitting bull and um blackfoot and running water whatever these natives the names these natives had they don't give a damn about none of that they don't care about you sitting in a teepee blowing fucking whatever you was smoking and them teepees getting high off them plants and shit that's why the lord sent them over here plus you niggas on that um that niggas were really on some satanic worshiping that niggas was into worshiping the moon the stars the bears, the wolves, all that weird shit, Mother Nature. Hey, you Native Americans, y'all bugged the fuck out too. Y'all niggas bugged out. That's why the Lord got you niggas drinking that fucking, that fire water. Your ass can't even leave the reservation. You so motherfucking drunk. You can't find your way off the reservation. A lot of you. I'm reading this. It says, Native peoples, nor did they acknowledge the tribes. Yeah, man, you so don't give a damn about no tribes. That's why he gave you names. Blackfoot. Yeah, Blackfoot Sioux. Ain't no motherfucking tribe named no Blackfoot Sioux. Right? Black Hawks. Um, what else? Um what, what, what other man, you know when you know what names this devil gave. The devil Savage. He also called you a damn savage. When he came, we was the one who came here on the savagery. <laughs> I'm gonna read the colonials sought to convert the native people in the new world the new world and now what they're looking to set up with the new world order right you see these everything goes together these these are the same wicked men from the roman empire the new world and strip them of their what strip them of their land john 10 and 10 again it says the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy and to destroy matter of fact you already know where we gotta go to you already know (laughs) Yeah, let me journey to the book of um, Micah 2, verse... Let's start at 1. You gotta start at 1. Honestly, let's just hit 2, and then we'll go back to 1. 
to in their covered fields and take them by violence and houses and take them away so they oppress a man and his house, even a man and his heritage. That's what this man did. He took away people's homes. He took away their lands. <laughs> he's, he's oppressing them on their own soil, right? You go back to verse one, what did the Lord say? Woe, destruction to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. Yeah, these devils, before um, everything is, before they make a move, they they write it out, they plan it, they they make sure they rehearse it. Look at the police. The police don't just kick in your door. Them niggas some were practicing right now on how to go run up in a building, how to run up in a house, different ways to do different things. Because this is the devil. You, this is the devil you're dealing with, man. Satan. It says, "Woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. When the morning is light, they practice it. Why? Because it is in the power of their hands, man." The Lord blessed him with that sword, right? The Lord put a spirit of thievery in him, a spirit of deception, a spirit of robbery, a, a killing spirit. So, you know, that, Satan going to run with it. <laughs> Satan going to run with it, man. The devil, you know what's going to fuck him up when he um when he trying to do good. When he, when he think his belly is filled and he done had enough. That's when the Lord going to get him. In his mind, he should continue killing, stealing, robbing, raping. Because he's good at it. I'm reading this. It says, many of the European missionaries, missionaries, them Christians, them Christians. And I'm telling you, man, you thinking Jesus coming to get you? These great missionaries, man, these are some of the same spirits of these people back today. Back today, running these different churches from your Catholic institutions, your Baptists, your disadvantages, <laughs> your Jehovah sicknesses. <laughs> All these different things. It says many of the European missionaries who energetically sought to spread Christianity to native peoples were motivated by a sense of a mission seeking to bring the gospel to those who had never had a chance to hear it. So let's let's get this right. They, they came to bring the gospel to the Native Americans and look at the Native Americans where they're at right now. Come on, man. Obviously, this was not the gospel. This was not the good news. This was not the good news because you didn't have the right people bringing the message. Yeah, you had a, you had some fuckers who done stole the book, who done brought down the real people of God, and now they're trying to act like they know how to interpret this book. Matter of fact, what did the Lord say to you Edomite missionaries? The book of Psalms 50, verse 16, But unto the wicked, the Most High Seth, what has thou to do to declare my statues or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth? Hey, how dare these devils try to preach the gospel? Try to bring the good news to the natives and what happened? The natives end up losing everything, <laughs> losing their land, losing their heritage, losing their goddamn minds, um, lost the children, lost of um, animals, <laughs> yeah, lost the culture. What happened? A lot of their kids were taken by these missionaries. Let's go to that. Yeah, I'm going to read this again. It says, um, many of the European missionaries who energetically sought to spread Christianity to native peoples were motivated by a sense of mission seeking to bring the gospel to those who had never had a chance to hear it, thereby offering an opportunity to be saved to be saved in the in the context of the often brutal treatment of native peoples by early spanish conquistadors many missionaries saw themselves as siding compassionately and protectively with the indigenous peoples in 15 yeah bullshit bullshit in um 1537 pope paul iii declared that in the indians were not be to be killed that's how that's how bad it was they was putting in work on um from the Native Americans, man, that the Pope had to step in and speak. It says, or enslaved, but humans, yeah, you Native Americans were slaves too, or enslaved, but human beings with souls capable of salvation. At the time, this was understood to be an enlightened view of indigenous, in, indigenous people in that well-meaning missionaries sought to encourage. Yeah, we know what the outcome was. We know what the outcome was. Let's fast forward. 
Let's fast forward. Now, from the perspective of the natives, people, the European discovery of the New World was more aptly an invasion. Yeah. Fuck all that missionary stuff. They didn't come to bring no Christianity. It was an invasion. <laughs> it says most were deeply connected to the land, but had no traditions of land ownership or private property. They often expressed astonishment that the land could be sold or negotiated through treaties. Yeah, through treaties. Since to them, land was not a source of private profit, but of life, including the life of the spirit. Some lands were also sacred as they bore the graves of the dead. Over the course of nearly three centuries, the terms removal, displacement, and session came to be used by <laughs> the European settlers. You hear that? Removal, displacement, session. That's how these devils use, man, through um, the craftiness. It's a crafty devil. Matter of fact, it says what through his policy, he shall... let me get that. Let me get that. Bear with me, my beloved brethren. We got to back up what we talk about, right? Hmm. Okay, here we go. Let's go to the book of Daniel 8 and verse 25. Let me see. Bear with me. Bear with me. All right. All right, this is the book of um, Daniel 8 verse 25. And through his policy... Also, he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without him. That Lord going to destroy this devil. The devil got to pay for all these atrocities, <laughs> all these wrongdoings, all these wrongdoings. It says removal, displacement, session came to be used by European settlers. Native peoples were to be removed from their lands had occupied displaced to other lands and their lands seceded to newcomers. Finally, Indian tribes were forcibly settled or reserve on, on reservations lands set apart. Yeah. This, this man's method of operation don't change, man. And he's, um, you can't be looking for, for this man to come and save you. Look at what, what happened to the, when the natives seen Jesus. When, when Jesus came to greet the natives through his missionaries, they lost everything. They lost everything. So what makes you think this man's coming to save you? It's first off, this punk don't exist. <laughs> you looking for somebody to save you that don't exist. That's strike one. And, and this ain't our Lord and Savior. That's strike two. That's strike two. And you know, strike three is um, anything outside of this truth is going to be destroyed. Shalom.